there's this thing called verbal cues and verbal pauses. And what we found is that when you use the right tone with the right pace and you're conversational, people respond better. Even our clients that come in and they're like, oh, I would never do that. The challenge is that most of us don't actually understand what it means to use verbal cues. And so I wanna share with you kind of the conversational component of selling. Now, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to go to a coffee shop at some point in the next three days. And I want you to watch people interacting at a coffee shop or at a bar. Is it very formal? Is it loose? Are people like, oh my God, tell me more what? Oh, oh, right. Are they cutting people off? Are they saying oohs and ahs and others? Everybody like, you know, Dan Rather's on Nightline or ABC. I don't know, whatever he was on back in the day. And hello, welcome back to LMO and hello, right? How are people interacting? And people cut people off. They say, ooh, is it up? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, what did you say? Tell me more about that. What, what happened? Your boss did what? Oh my God, she said what? Oh, did you guys, how, how was that date? Oh, no way. And they're enthusiastic and they have variations and their tone is going up and down and they're using their hands. But today I want to talk about what verbal cues are. And verbal cues, right, are what allow a script to sound unscripted. So if I was reading this, traditionally, most people like the traditional notion of maintaining a strictly professional demeanor in sales is outdated. Human behavior has evolved and a purely professional approach can come off as interrogational rather than engaging. Observing a couple conversing in the park illustrates this well. They are in flow, nodding, laughing, and sometimes even interrupting each other to clarify or delve deeper. Now that's how most people read and that's why they don't like scripts. The way you use it using verbal cues is you're like, now, um, you may have heard like the traditional notion of maintaining a strictly professional demeanor and sales is outdated, but what does that even mean? Well, human behavior is evolved and using just like a, a purely professional approach can actually come off as interrogational rather than engaging. So like if you go and observe a couple conversing in a park, this is really going to illustrate the point well. They're in flow. They're nodding. They're laughing, right? They, they might even be like, believe it or not, interrupting each other to ask for clarity or to delve deeper. Now, which one did you like better? Did you like the news reporter? Well, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about, or did you like the ability to take that paragraph and make it human? You'll hear things like likes and ums and, uh, uh, wait, and, and right, repetitives, little, little, inserted stutters, adding a little bit of clarity words in there to make it more normal conversation. And so when you write your script, you should think about having stuff like this in here because verbal cues are what we call verbal acknowledgements, allow us to be a part of the conversation. So somebody is saying something to you. Somebody might say something to you like, oh, we've been looking for, for two years, two years. Oh, wow. Oh, two years. Right. Or they might say, you know, like the market's tight. Ah, yeah, we hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. So if somebody, you know, if somebody says something to you, like um, somebody says to you, like, well, we just want to wait to see where interest rates go. You can go with a skeptical tone. Oh, really? And they're like, yeah. And they're going to automatically go into it instead of you hammering that. Well, rates are going to be this and you're dumb. And right. Because that's what they hear. Go. Oh, oh, really? Tell me more about that. Oh, 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 uh-oh, right? Yeah, we, we we wrote three offers and we, oh, oh, that could be a, uh, wow, tell me more. So vocal acknowledgements, uh, and they also, what, what what's really cool is when somebody's talking and you become good at verbal cues, you're going to go, they're going to be talking and go, uh-huh, right. And they're very soft. They're very subtle. Oh, no way. Really? Tell me more. Uh huh. Hold up, and then when you get that prospect right, because I because we we listen to calls every day, and you'll sometimes get that runaway prospect. I call them the runaway prospect, and they're talking out of their anus, right? Not your anus, their anus, and you're sitting there listening, like, how the frick do I get them back on track? Well, it's verbal cues because if you're in an interrogation, you're not going to stop. They're not going to stop talking until somebody forces them or they run out of breath. And they're in control. It's their process. And then they're going to tell you at the end, 
I'm not interested. I want to wait. We need more time. So with verbal cues, you get a runaway. Uh Uh-huh. Right, right. Oh, okay. So, so hold on. And then your tone goes up a little bit. Your assertiveness goes up. You're still saying curiosity. You're not like, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. You're, you're being assertive. You're using your energy. So you're going to be like, hold on, hold, hold, hold on a minute there, Todd. And if you use his name or her name, it, it's a dog whistle. They're like, yeah, what's up? Think about it. Like, call your kid. Hey, honey, come here. Honey, come here. Chris, come here. Chris is like, okay, I got to be mom and dad are mad. I better, I better show up. But it'd be like, honey, honey, no big deal. But you say the dog's name, the dog comes. You say the person's name, the person perks up. So you have to learn how to use verbal cues, your tone and your pace to control the conversation. Because one of our sales guys yesterday, he's like 19 minute call. He's like, man, that was a really good call. I was like, did you book the appointment? He's like, no, but he wants me to call him back in 90 days. I'm like that call sucked. It's a waste of 19 minutes. He's like, why? I'm like, everything you needed, you could have gotten four and a half to six. Everything else is just filler and fluff. He's like, yeah, but he's been in the real estate business for nine years. I'm like, why does that matter? I was like, why do you get in the real estate business? He's like, because he loves real estate. I'm like, no, he didn't. He got in the real estate business because he wanted to make money. Why'd you guys all get in the real estate business? You wanted time freedom, money freedom, the ability to be your own boss. Now you're your own boss. You're like, oh my God, I need accountability. Now that nobody's yelling at me and I've been used to being told what to do all day long, I need somebody to tell me what to do. It's totally normal. All right? Like we all need accountability. Like I need accountability at the gym. I don't have my accountability buddy to go to the gym with. I probably wouldn't go as often because- he forces me to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I don't want to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I like to sleep. Everybody does. Right? So I like to sleep just like you. So if you are doing the same thing everybody else is and you're asking a question, they answer, then they ask a question and then you answer and then they ask, a, you're interrogative. You're not controlling and the prospect doesn't trust that you have a process. And so therefore you are now in the charisma game. But when you're like, oh, oh, really? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you said earlier, so this is how you take somebody and you loop them back to something important. So, you know, you get that runaway prospect, right? They're talking about a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. doesn't help you in the home buying process. doesn't help you in the home selling process. They're telling you about all these things. You're like, okay, I don't know how to get out of this. You're like, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, hold on there, Bob. Um, I, I apologize. You said something a minute ago. Um, I just wanted to see if I could kind of get a little bit more clarity, like just so I can see things through your eyes. When you said X, Y, and Z, why, why is that important for you to change now though? Why, 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 right? That's a verbal cue. Why, why, why? That's, that's articulating in a certain way to capture attention. But, 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 why, 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 why is that important for you now though? And people are like, oh, well, and they'll go, and they'll go, oh, well, or, oh yeah, that's important. And they always say the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's important because of X, Y, and Z. Oh, could you tell me a little bit more about what's going on with that? And they're going to instantly go right into it. So we have a free school community and I'd love to invite you to it. You're subscribed to me here on YouTube. If you're not, hit the subscribe button. If you like this content, um, we drop personal things. We drop emotional things. We drop mindset stuff. We drop things about my personal life and struggles that I've been through. I've been rich. I've been poor. Um, I've been in debt, a lot of debt, almost a million, over a million dollars actually when you take in back taxes. And um, I had to figure out how to get out of it. And so we created a school community to support you because real estate's tough and real estate's lonely. And we're going to teach you some, some, some basic tips on human psychology, some basic listing appointment and buyer presentation tips that if you implement, it'll automatically accelerate you and make you not an average agent saying the same thing. We teach you how to book appointments. We teach you some, some basics um, inside of our school community, but you also get to be around hundreds of other agents um, as we grow to hopefully thousands of other agents nationwide that want to elevate their communication skills so that they can get to the two to three, four deals every month consistently. Uh, And if you want to see if there's like some hidden gaps and you like the style that we teach, you like this human behavior, this human psychology, not so salesy, not asking this typical qualifying questions. Are you pre-approved? What's your timeline? Okay. Let me send you a drip. They're on 14 drips, right? It's just, it's just bad. They're on 14 drips. Not your fault. You were taught that, but it is your problem because your bank account's probably not as robust as you'd like it to be. And if our bank account's not good, that's a direct correlation, not of your not of your CRM, of your skills. I know plenty of agents who have zero CRM, they're running an Excel spreadsheet and they're doing 40 to 50 deals a year because their skills are phenomenal. Their ability to connect with humans, find the problem, book an appointment, solve problems is amazing. So um, if you want to learn more about what we do on like a more 
intense level. Um, we have multiple programs. There'll be a link below. You can actually book a strategy session with me or one of my team members. And um, I'll see you inside school. Let's go learn. Take care.